Hello everyone, um, we're Pete and Jay from the Burp AI team. Um, we're excited to announce that Burp AI is now officially available in Burp Suite Professional 2025.2.3. Um, and to help everyone get started, everyone's going to get 10,000 free credits upon installation. Um, so that should be good for exploring all the new features. Um, and so far we've already seen around 3,000 unique accounts making AI requests and over 70,000 AI requests in total. Um, hi everyone. Um, we've designed Burp AI with a strong focus on data privacy and responsible data handling. Uh, when using AI features in D Burp, data collected from Burp Suite Pro is sent through our Burp AI platform to interact with one or more LLMs. Um, importantly, we have zero data retention agreements with the third party model providers, so anything sent to them can't be stored or used to train their models. On our platform, we only keep data as needed to make the service work like for maintaining stateful conversations with LLMs. We treat all data as unstructured by default, meaning we don't actively interpret or categorize it. While we don't actively analyze this data, if we spot sensitive information during maintenance and support, we're required to delete it to stay ISO compliant. If you can't use AI for a specific client engagement, you can disable Burp AI on a per project basis in Burp Pro settings. This ensures no data is sent to Burp AI while that project file is loaded. So we're just going to give a quick demo of the five AI features we've released so far. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll hand it back over to Pete. Cool. Yeah, so uh, I mean, hopefully everyone can see the screen. Um, I've just got a project file that I created earlier um, with a scan of Gin and Juice, which is our vulnerable web application. Um, but the first feature I want to talk through is the AI recorded login generator. So this feature streamlines the creation of recorded logins, uh, which should make authentication during scans quicker and easier. So if we, if we go to start a new scan over here, um, we select a scan type, so in this case I'm going to do a crawl and audit. Um, and if you go down to the application login tab and we click on record recorded login, you'll see it now says using AI or Burp's Chrome extension. So that now gives us the option when we click new to use this AI recorded login. Um, so I click continue here. So if I wanted to do this scan for gin and juice shop again, um, I'll say, right, this is gin and juice, and the URL gin and juice dot shop. Cool. And the username is Carlos. Password is Hunter2. Um, so you basically you, you enter in your details uh, for the site there. And it's worth noting that your credentials remain secure within Burp Suite Professional and they're not sent to any cloud infrastructure or any third party LLMs. So now that I've entered the details in, we'll try and get Burp AI to log into the site for us automatically um, and generate that recorded login so that we can authenticate during the scan. Okay, so it's gone it's gone to the home page first of all. So it's, it's found the My Account tab at the top. And let's click on that. Um, it's got a username field, so it's going to put in a username. And it's got a password field, so it's going to put in the password. Cool. And so now it's on the now it's logged in, it should recognize that it's logged in and complete it successfully for us. There we go. Cool. Okay, so I guess now that we've got our authentication, we can show off another feature, which is the um, reduced false positives for broken access control. So if I go back to the scan type here, we see we've got this AI enhancement panel. And at the moment, we've got broken access control, false positive reduction. So if I have that enabled, then I'll go through and set up a scan. So scan details, and here we want to do Gen Juice Shop again. Cool. Um, do HTTPS. Uh, scan configuration. So it's worth noting when you're wanting to do the broken access control scan check, um, you have to run unauthenticated check uh, crawl with an authenticated crawl. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to run in deep mode. But you can use a custom config, and by default, this is actually the case. Um, you want to make sure that this is unchecked. Um, otherwise, the check won't be able to run. Um, so leaving it like this it would be fine. Um, so now that's all set up it should um, run the broken access control scan. There we go. Um, 
so save us waiting for that to finish I did one earlier so here we go there's a the result of a scan on gin and juice shop and um, you'll notice there's this panel over here the AI um, enhancements panel and it's got it's letting us know that Burp AI reduced a false positive that it found um, and it actually confirmed an issue as well so we can have a closer look at the issue in here so I see right there broken access control and so this has been confirmed you can tell by the severity on it there um, and down here we can see the reason the AI thinks that that's a real issue so the inverse here is that it's also found a false positive one so if we click on here we can see the reason it thinks it's a false positive which in this case it is it's just a promotional page um, so yeah that's the broken access control check um, so if we go back to our, our dashboard page we've got a lot of other issues here um, and so we can choose one of these and demonstrate the explore this feature uh, so I just usually choose like a SQL injection or something um, so what we can do is we can click on that and then we can click on this explore issue button we've got here and there we go it's going to start an explore issue tab uh, task sorry so what's going to happen is Burp AI is going to automatically generate uh, the initial actions, it's going to craft some requests and payloads in order to further explore the issue. So there we go, it's come up with its first action, a uh, step it wants to take, and you can see here we've got our request and our response. And what's going to happen is that's going to feed back to Burp AI and it's going to decide what it should do next. So it's going to try all sorts of different things to explore the issue in more detail. Uh, it's worth noting that for things like requests here, you can just send it to repeater if you want to manually continue uh, looking at it yourself. Um, this is the exact same with an intruder attack, which it can also call. You can uh, send that to intruder and do some manual testing on that yourself. So when you're like happy with where it's got to, um, you can always hit this finish task button, which I'm just going to do now. And what it's going to do then is it's going to ask the AI for a summary of what it's done so far. So there we go, see it at the top. Um, I haven't been paying attention to what it was doing, but here we go, you've got a summary there saying it was looking at the SQL injection in the tracking cookie, and it was attempting to extract database information. Um, and in this case, it wasn't able to find anything to do with the database there. Um, and then it tried some time-based stuff as well. So yeah, that's, that's the explore this feature. Um, I'm going to pass you on now to Jay, who's going to talk about some of the other features. Cool, thanks. Um, so one of the features we've also added is um, called Explainer, um, or Explanations. Um, so what you can do here is if you have something in the request or response that you're not really sure you understand, um, so for instance, we can select the user agent, and then we can send it to the Explanations panel over here. So you can use Command-D to send it there, or you can right-click and click explain this up here and that will actually go off and it will send the request off to Burp AI and that will give us an explanation of what uh, uh, what that what that it contains um, the explanation feature is context aware so if you select something in the in the headers of the response or in the response body it will know that um, you know the context in which you've selected it so its response will be um, tailored to that, that context um, that's a pretty simple uh, change we've added. Um, another thing we've uh, added is um, an extension to the Montoya API. So um, we've added AI capabilities to that so that extension developers can use AI in BAPs. Um, so here I'm going to show you the report LLM BAP, which was created by one of our developers at Portswigo. So it allows you to generate a detailed report from a set of issues detected during a scan. So let's start by downloading the report M back from the back store. So you should be able to find it through here. Oops, good type. There it is. So let's just install that. And because it's an AI extension, it asks us if we want to enable AI for this extension. Um, okay, so we should now be able to see it in the installed section, if you can. Um, Right, so that's installed. So let's go back to the scan that Pete ran before. Um, so we should be able to find that. 
and what we can do is we can select a set of issues that we're interested in reporting on um, and we basically can send those via the extensions option here so we can add selected issues to the report and then the report will um, be a, a map has got a, a tab here which allows us to um, basically tailor the report to what we want. So what we'll do here is we'll, um, we'll do it in the style of Mario um, so we'll generate a report in the style of Nintendo's Mario character so it's going to generate a report based on these issues that we've selected. So it'll take a few uh, few seconds to do that. Mm -hmm. It's been really um, interesting seeing all the different AI extensions you guys have been making. They've been really creative. Yeah. Um, it's taking longer than we wanted. It's taking a while. Of light there but okay, so we've got a um, it's a new Mario report uh, written about the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, so anyway, so that's got the summary of all the issues that we've we've selected as part of that. And this is obviously just an example of a bat um, that one of our guys has written. So um, hopefully we can get some really cool stuff on the bat store using AI. Um, so I think that's that's about it for today. So we've got mm -hmm. lots more exciting AI features between the pipeline, and we can't wait for them to try you out. Uh, try for you to try them out. Um, if you have any feedback on the features and Burp Eye in general, then uh, we'd love to hear about them, um, all your thoughts and questions on Burp Eye channel and Discord. Does the automated login work based on the request responses or based on what it sees on a screenshot? Um, so, I mean, we've tried all sorts of different approaches really. Um, it doesn't currently use a screenshot, so that's pretty much what we can say, I think, really. Yeah, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't make a request for each, each time it tries to log in, so it's basically using yes. the current recorded login functionality, but it's just saving you that, that time to, to kind of record that. Mm -hmm. Can you give it custom report templates? Uh, I'm guessing that's a question specific to the BAP we showed. Um, I don't think you can currently. Um, the instructions that you can give there will, you know, will tailor the report. Um, so, but I think that's something that we could add, uh, or the BAP author can add in the future, certainly. So, yeah, but not currently. <coughs> Um, for intruder integrations, can we specify where we want the AI to focus on? Also, can it call? Can it do multi-stage attacks? Um, so I'm guessing this is assuming to the intruder integration with Explore this. Um, and at the moment, there's no sort of way of manually influencing it. Um, I guess if you created a custom issue, you could provide some sort of instructions in there, but. Um, the short answer is no, not really at the moment. Um, so that if that's something you, you guys are interested in, um, yeah, please let us know. Yeah, on the channel. Because <coughs> the the kind of interactive element is something we've been been considering, but haven't put that in yet. So I think that's something. If you're interested, then uh, yeah, let us know. Are there new challenges or learning labs on the site for folks to try and test out the new functionality? Um, not specifically, no, not specifically. Um, like, I mean, like I said, we we here use Gin and Juice Shop, which is our like deliberately vulnerable web application. Um, you guys will have access to that as well. So, in the same way that we demonstrated the features here, you guys can absolutely experiment in the same way there. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any labs planned no, currently for that. Explore issue seems nice. Is there some functionality to launch a certain attack with AI on a particular variable slash header, uh, like striking the repeater? Um, have we so that's that's pretty much the same um, as the like in, intruder integration question in that not currently. Um, again, that's if that's something you guys are interested in, please let us know. Um, the more feedback we have, the better, um, really. 
Um, that's that certainly sounds like an interesting idea. Um, <clears throat> and last one, can the OO handle testing APIs? Um, I assume this is in the context of its floor issue, so it should be able to test an API in the same way that as long as it's a RESTful API, there should be no issues with it testing that. It should understand the rest reasonably well. So. Mm -hmm. And GraphQL, for instance, it's definitely, we've tested it with GraphQL, we know it can do that quite well. Yeah. Um, from the context of like starting an API scan or something like that, that's not something that we have on offer at the moment. Um, again, it's something we can we can look into.